This is John Paul Rye. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan, and today I got a tweet from Laura B. Big shout out to her. I cover her quite a bit. Give her a follow if you haven't. She's on Twitter. And the tweet says, something happened with Jay Nichols after May 2020. He clearly states in a pretrial hearing that her lies, revet, certificates, and homeland security goes to her credibility. Jay Nichols allowed this evidence to be adduced, even though it would lead to satellite litigation as we now see. So it really seems everything Judge Nichols said about Amber Heard in the UK trial was purely being said to be put in public to make her look good for the mainstream news, for the general population who's not following the case to say, hey, a judge said this, it must be right. Okay, Amber Heard's all right. Honestly, it's one of the most frustrating things I've witnessed in my lifetime where such terrible lies, deceit, and misinformation has been put out in the public by a judge, by a court. It's really, really sickening, to be honest. Let's see what we got here. So this is something Laura clipped out from a court document and she clipped out the important parts concerning what she's saying here. The issues concerning Ms. Hurd's letter to the Department of Homeland Security and the alleged smuggling of dogs into Australia were contentious and if Ms. James was allowed to give evidence in relation to them would lead to satellite litigation. Alleged smuggling. Well, there was smuggling, it wasn't alleged, that actually happened. Paragraph 32 and page 6 of Exhibit KJ1 2013 Incident Regarding Providing Altered Certificates When Dogs Were Inoculated and Whether There Was a Vet Who Could Be Greased, meaning a vet who could be paid off because we know that's what Amanda does when she needs something, she goes and plays Monopoly with someone, drinks hot chalk with them, or she pays them off if they don't want to hang out with her that night. Potentially, this matter also goes to Ms. Hurd's credibility, and the claimant should be entitled to adduce it. So, because Amber Heard smuggled dogs and forged documents, that makes her more of a credible person, I guess. And then, this part here, Laura clips out, Paragraphs 25-26, Ms. Hurd's letter to the Department of Homeland Security regarding Savannah McMillan and Exhibit KJ1, pages 4-5. I agree with Ms. Sherburn that this incident is potentially relevant to Ms. Hurd's credibility. Because it concerned her credibility, it was not a matter which had to be pleaded. The issue of potential relevance is whether Ms. Hurd said something to the department of which she knew was untrue, which she absolutely did, which she does, to everybody, which is why I'm saying she's probably not an avid reader, because pretty much everything she does in her life is an exaggeration, a lie, misleading. So if you believe she's an avid reader because people saw her and she says so, I guess that's on you. I agree with Ms. Sherborne that this is relatively self-contained and the risk of satellite litigation does not persuade me that it should be excluded. The claimant may adduce this evidence. And underneath here, she clips out the article, which I covered a couple of days ago from the Daily Mail, which says exclusive Amber Heard is under investigation for perjury in an FBI-backed probe into claims she lied to Australian officials after smuggling her Yorkshire Terriers pistol and boo into the country in 2015. So there we have it. After all is said and done with the UK case, there's more and more proof and evidence that Judge Nickel, like I said before, was just there to give Amber Heard's credibility, reputation, a boost, and there to make it look like she's a good person in the public eye, basically by him just saying she is. That's what blows my mind, is some people, there are a few, come around, or once in a while, the mainstream media has to mention or even the smaller venues have to mention factually Johnny quote-unquote lost the case and that's what they wanted out there in the news in the public eye. You know, I was watching a Denzel Washington interview and he said something important actually that pertains to this. What he said was, well it pertains to everything in the news, but what he said was the truth 
isn't as important as getting to the story first these days. And it's absolutely true. So the truth of the UK trial and what was going on wasn't as important to the judge there and the legal system to an extent in the UK, because I can't bash the entire legal system for the country on this one case. But my point is, it was more important for them to have Johnny lost the case out in the headlines, out in the news, out on social media, more so than the truth of the case was important. So, that's not a good thing. And I'll admit, when I make my own videos, I have to think about the timing of the video. Well, I could get there first, but I don't have all the details, but people will still watch it and click on it and things like that. Or do I wait and get a few more details and get a little more truth and evidence and everything behind my opinion or get it out there? And sometimes what I do is I get it out there and I say, this is my opinion. We don't know everything yet, but here's what we have now so I could get it out first. But not everyone does that. So, obviously, Judge Nickel isn't going to be like, well, this is just my opinion about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, but here it is. So, if you see a video that's a little premature for a story, that's okay. We want to talk about things. That's what we're here for. But you got to say something like, it's my opinion. This is everything we know now. There's more to come. If they make the video or the news story or whatever it is as if they know that fact or if they're filling in that headline as something that's actually happened already that's speculative without saying that opinion disclaimer first, well, that's something to look out for. Anyway, little rant there at the end. But you guys, I think, get the message here that Judge Nickel has been caught once again making a poor judgment and a wrong judgment. So thank you, Laura B., for all the great tweets. And I got to give a special shout out to Donald Dolan, who gave me a very generous donation for my GoFundMe, which I'm saving up for a PC. Now crawling up to $300. So thank you guys so much who donated. And even if it doesn't hit the goal, that's okay. I'll still get a new PC at some point because I'm rolling on my cell phone now. But it's okay. I got colorful slides and, you know, everything comes out fine. You guys, of course, let me know what you think down below. Doing shout outs, special thanks, things like that. Consider subscribing here to the channel. If you don't, I guess I'll be sad, but I'll get over it. See you next time.